Many years ago and during my first year as a staff accountant, I remember my boss walking up to my cubicle and giving me a task that seemed terrifying at the time. The task that he gave me was this. He gave me a trial balance report and asked me to create an income statement. Now, that may sound simple enough, but at the time, I just couldn't remember from my college education how to take a trial balance and turn it into an income statement. So what we're going to do in this video is that I'm gonna open up an Excel file here that has a trial balance, and we're gonna go through four steps that you're gonna follow to turn that into an income statement. But before doing that, we're just gonna go over some basic ground rules and basic definitions that would help us along the way. And if you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back. This is Bill Hanna, the financial controller and founder of the Controller Academy, where I take your accounting knowledge from zero to hero in about six to eight weeks. I'm gonna leave a link down below. Before we jump into the Excel file and doing the actual work, I'm gonna show you quickly the flow of data in accounting so that you may understand where the triad balance falls in within the accounting cycle. So when we look at the flow of data, we begin with business transactions. And an example is that you go out and purchase a computer equipment, uh, and that's gonna be an asset for $1,000, increasing your assets and reducing your cash. So one asset goes down, which is cash. Another asset goes up, which is computers. We record that in the form of journal entries, a debit and credit. Now, from there, we record that into a general ledger. The general ledger is made up of general ledger accounts that summarize the activity within each account. So you'll have one account for computers, for example, and another account for cash. At the end of each period, we would take the ending balances of the general ledger and create what we call a trial balance where we attempt to balance the debits and credits to make sure that they're equal at the end of the period. Now, from a trial balance, we can take the accounts and summarize them and group them into the financial statements, income statement, balance sheet, and then we can combine activities and in the income statement and the balance sheet to create the statement of cash flow. So as an example, if we look at a trial balance as of March 31, 2022, we'll see here all of the accounts of the general ledger and the ending balances in these accounts. Now, when you look at the trial balance here, you will see that there is a group of accounts at the beginning of the trial balance that makes up the balance sheet accounts. And the balances in these accounts represent the ending balance in these accounts. This is opposed to the other group of accounts that begin with revenue, and these are the income statement accounts, and the ending balances here represent the activity year to date in these accounts. So this is important for you to realize, okay? The balance sheet accounts are ending balances. It's a snapshot in time. While for the income statement tri balance accounts, these are activity year to date in that account. All right, so now with this basic understanding of the trial balance, let's go ahead and look at the example that we have here in Excel. So we have a trial balance for Spa Booker as of March 31st, 2022. We'll go ahead in this example and turn this trial balance into an income statement for the quarter ending March 31st, 2022. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link down below for you to download this file here so you can play with it after watching this video. All right, so we're gonna follow four easy steps to create the income statement. Step number one is to identify the income statement account. Step two, label the accounts. Step three, use a sum of formula. Step number four is to foot or total the income statement accounts. So starting off with step number one is to identify the income statement accounts. The easiest way to do that is to look at the account number. A typical setup of the chart of accounts will have the assets begin with a one, the liabilities begin with a number two, uh, the equity accounts begin with a number three, revenue with a four, cost of sales or cost of goods sold with a five, um, and then uh, operating expenses with a six, and non-operating expenses with a seven. I've made a detailed video in the past about the proper setup of a chart of accounts. I'm gonna leave a link to it up here so that you can watch it after this video. So the easiest way, like we said, is to look at the number of the account and the number will begin with revenue. Uh, that's gonna be a four, right? And then you're gonna have cost of goods sold, a five, and operating expenses, a six, non-operating, a seven, which we don't have here. We have only up to a six operating expenses. Uh, so these are the accounts here. We're gonna go ahead and maybe color them with a different font color. 
and now we have identified our income statement account. Okay, now step number two is to label the accounts here with the parent name. So when we look at the GL account, so we have uh, sales, platform fees, sales, transaction fees. The parent account here is sales and the child account is platform fees. So the easiest way for us to create the income statement is to use the parent account, which is sales in the label column. So we're gonna call it sales for both of these accounts. Same thing is gonna be here. We have a bunch of cost of sales accounts. Um, all of them are gonna have a parent name and a child name for the account. So we're gonna go ahead and call all of these cost of sales. We'll go ahead and do the same for payroll expenses. and the same for the other operating expenses. All right, now that we've labeled all of our general ledger accounts, we're gonna go ahead and create the Excel formula to sum up these accounts. But before doing that, I like to take these parent accounts and remove duplicates. So I'll just take it to another sheet and go to data remove duplicates, and that will give me the shortened list of my accounts. I'll take that and put it into my income statement, and I can go ahead and create my sum if formula. So the formula will go equals sum if, and take the label column. If what's in the label column matches what I have here, then return the value that I have in the ending balance column. And I can drag that down, but when I drag it down for the expense accounts, I need to change my ending balance column from the credit to debit because expenses will be always a debit. So in the formula, instead of column D, I'm gonna have column C. and I can drag that down for the rest of the expense accounts. Now that I have my values in place with the summit formula, I can go ahead and do a formatting and a footing of this income statement. So the first thing in the formatting is that you have a proper header. So the proper header is gonna have the name of the company, income statement, and then the period. So for the quarter ending March 31, 2022. So that's good. Uh, the second thing is that you're gonna have your sales and cost of sales, and then you'll have your gross profit. So we're gonna drag this down a bit and create a row for gross profit. And that's gonna be your equal your sales minus your cost of sales, and that's gonna be your gross profits. We're gonna format that properly by creating uh, two lines, one above and one below. Okay, now we have all of the other operating expenses. I will go ahead and create a title for these and call it operating expenses. And then I can sum my operating expenses, total OPEX, and sum that here. And also I'll format that the same way, a line above and a line below. And then I'll create a row for net income. And I'm gonna say that's gonna be gross profit minus my operating expenses. And then I'll foot that by creating a line and a double line so that will look like the final product. And you're all set, that's it. So all you gotta do is follow these steps. You can download this file. If you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And if someone else that you know might benefit from this video, go ahead and share it with them. And I'll see you in the next one.